you think flooding along the Louisiana coast is bad now, just wait a <laughs> every day or two in some cities in the next decade and you can blame it all on the moon a wobble in the moon could create dangerous waves for coastal communities a nasa study found the moon's natural wobble as it orbits the earth could create high tides that cause widespread flooding the moon's tilt changes over its 18.6 year cycle that wobble in combination with climate change and sea level rise could significantly increase high tide flooding across the globe On Saturday, 17th of July, it rained heavily in the Austrian region of Salzburg. The result was high water levels in rivers and landslides. The town of Hallen suffered the most, where the river overflowed its banks and water flows flooded most of the city. Mayor Alexander Stan Gassinger called the incident a disaster. The local population was asked to stay in their homes, not to enter underground garages and basements, and stay away from river dams. In the Bergfried district, Temporary shelters were established at the school for those whose apartments and houses were damaged. More than 200 firefighters fought against the elements, and help also came from other regions of the country. Fortunately, no fatalities have been reported, but the damage is enormous. Then we realized. Well, the storms, which have caused so much devastation, are part of a weather system which first caused flash flooding in the UK earlier this week. From America to Europe and Russia, extreme weather is breaking records. There was so little time to run, people tell us. Look at the force of this flood. The region has seen record high rainfall over the past 24 hours. Oh my God! What is here? Towns and villages across Western Germany have been battered. Houses, businesses, livelihoods destroyed in a matter of hours. Thousands of people left homeless across this region. Heavy rain. Flash floods. Extraordinary results. Parts of the capital experienced torrential downpours yesterday. In northwest London, water cascaded from Hampstead Heath onto nearby Finchley Road. Cars were stranded under the Westway, the road which leads out of the city. These are the worst floods to hit this part of western Germany in living memory. America will be judged. That's why this weighing scale is here. How will she be judged? Two ways. A flood is determined for her. It will devastate the Mideast. A fire is appointed for her. It will devastate the Midwest. Small shift that has a, a relatively large impact on the tides that we see here on Earth. Scientists have predicted this for the last 70 years, but it's actually happening more quickly and it's more intense than we realize. This fire is raging out of control in southern Oregon as millions of people across the western United States are hit by another round of scorching temperatures. I'm on the west side. With a temperature in the town of Stovepipe Wells in California not falling below 42 degrees overnight, the highest daily minimum ever recorded in the Northern Hemisphere. We've seen heat waves, you know, right across the world, in fact, uh, droughts in one location. And because they're all so much more intense, we, we can see that the atmosphere is energetic and possibly more energetic than we're predicting it in our climate models. And that's the thing that is really worrying. Tonight in Oregon, the largest wildfire in the country exploding in size. A fire in Oregon, just one of 70 wildfires raging across 12 states. 
The bootleg fire is now seven times the size of San Francisco. Flash flooding is threatening millions of people. Just look at Newark, New Jersey today after storms rolled through there. And the West cannot catch a break. The Tamarack fire in Northern California grew exponentially overnight. Smoke from that fire in Oregon now clouding the skies over Utah. Extreme conditions leading to extreme concern. Pushing these fires are back-to-back -back heat waves. This one is the fourth in five weeks. And devastating the coastline with hundreds of millions of mussels literally cooked alive. An event so extreme, but with more than twice as much scorched earth compared to this same time last year, tonight a record already on track to be broken. Massive amounts of dead fish are washing ashore all across Tampa Bay. Beaches are closed, crews are racing to clean up the smelly, decaying bodies or fish. Local experts say it's early in the season to see concentrations of red tide this high. The images here are astonishing. Thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dead fish floating in the water. These massive fish kills continue to be a major problem in the Bay Area. The city says the massive amounts of dead fish started washing up in St. Pete waterways about 10 days ago. But emergency officials say in the last 24 hours, they've cleaned up more dead fish than in the past week. Dead fish littering the shorelines across Tampa Bay. I've been coming here for 10 years. I mean, this is the worst, worst it's ever been. Bait fish, sport fish, stingrays, even dolphins and manatees, all killed by red tide and piling up. It's being described as disturbing, sickening, and rancid. People across two counties say they can't believe their eyes or their noses, for that matter. KDK's Megan Schiller reports from Upper St. Clair to explain why there's now an active investigation into thousands of dead fish. There's no sheen on it. You know? Jack Conroy walks this trail every day, but he's never seen this. I see one dead fish, two dead fish, and I'm like, hmm. Then all of a sudden, there were dead fish everywhere. Just every fish in that creek was dead. Big fish, small fish. But at this point, we don't exactly know what's going on. You smell that? <laughs> Andre Holmes smelled it before he saw it. Hundreds of dead fish dumping out of Chartier's Creek into the Ohio, 15 miles north in McKee's Rocks. I've never seen anything like that outside of a horror movie. You know, I was like, okay, Stephen King type of stuff here. But it's not fiction. And the reality is, the damage is done. I'm not an expert, so I'm not trying to pretend to be one, but I've been around the water long enough to know that, okay, this is not a natural occurrence. And Death Valley National Park, located right along the border of California and Nevada, hit 54 degrees Saturday, which was very close to setting a record for the hottest temperature ever recorded by humans. But let me help them with one simple thing. The evidence around us is indisputable. We've seen this relatively frequently in the past years. Is it getting worse as the years go on or is that just perception? Well, it, it kind of seems like it is getting worse. Uh, you know, the, the, it, the number of fires that we are responding to uh, is clearly growing. Fueling a mega drought that has turned swathes of the U.S. into a tinderbox. There's a tornado right there. Oh my God, I've never seen anything like this in my life. Barry police are calling the damage catastrophic after a tornado ripped through the region. And the region's recent heat wave has literally cooked them alive. It's never smelled like this. Never smelled like this before. British Columbia's aquaculture industry depends largely on the region's mild climate. That is changing. Farming families who have thrived here for generations are now worried about the future. This used to be alive. Yeah. Now there's nothing. Most of the mussels around here now are all gone. Um, my clams, uh, you see the uh, sand dollars and stuff, we're all dead. The mass die-off illustrates the impact of climate change here and now. We knew the heat might have been bad, but we weren't expecting to see what we saw, or what we are seeing. And Western Canada's recent record-breaking heat may be a harbinger of things to come.
when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday?